Hi, my name is Robert Hall. On behalf of TubeDepot.com, welcome to this video edition of Improved Soldering Skills. With this series, I will be teaching you tools and techniques that you can use to make better solder connections stronger and more reliable. Well, before we get started, there's a few things I want to deal with regarding safety. It's important that you wear eye protection to protect your eyes from any kind of flying solder or chemicals. You want to be careful around soldering irons because they're very hot. You don't want to wear shorts or open-toed shoes in case of solder, hot solder drips on your legs or into your shoes. You want to make sure that you have good ventilation to make sure the fumes from the soldering get out. We're dealing with lead, so therefore it's important that you don't eat at your workstation, that you wash your hands often. And last but not least, you don't want to work around energized equipment. Make sure the power supplies are discharged before you start any kind of work. There are many different types of soldering irons that we use that you can find on the market. Uh, you'll find the ones that plug straight into the wall that you can solder with, and those work fine. You'll find the ones that, um, that are powered with propane, uh, that are actually like a, a lighter that uh, keeps the tip hot. Uh, you can find the ones that are battery powered. Battery powered works okay. The, um, the ones I like to use are the temperature control, control ones which you plug into the wall but when you apply the solder or iron to the component it will sense that temperature difference and will heat the tip up faster. Uh, that's the best for most types of soldering. Alright, solder is used to join two components together in an electrical connection, not necessarily a mechanical connection. Um, most solder that you'll find will be 60% lead and 40% tin. Uh, you want to avoid the plumber solder because plumber solder has an acid core in it that will eat holes in circuit board. Uh, there are lead free varieties of solder but they require more heat and a little more difficult to work with and we're going to strictly stick with the leaded solder. The solder that I use here has got a rosin core in it. It's not a solid core solder. It's got a rosin core that allows the solder to flow easily, more easier into the connection. It comes in, in one pound rolls. Uh, sometimes you can get it in smaller amounts. The one thing we haven't talked about, other than the water, is the flux. Um, flux is a, a very overlooked by a lot of people who begin soldering. A lot of people who have been soldering for a long time. The importance of flux is it actually will boil the, co the oxides off both metals trying to con combine together and allows that solder to flow in even tighter and quicker. Uh, this, was, this is the magic solder juice that is, just makes solder connections incredibly well. Here's something else that a lot of people don't use or don't see. This is called an orange wood stick and this is used for pro probing. You can use this amazing to probe connections you just made to make sure that they're, that they're good and solid. Uh, you can use it to probe uh, an amp or an effects pedal or a bad connection to see where the bad connection is by just moving around. It's non-conductive, it's wooden, it's extremely extremely hard for being wood and uh, when it gets worn down you just shave off some more and keep going. Um, all of these you can find at TubeDepot.com. Uh, we're going to use an acid brush uh, for cleaning as well as the alcohol used for cleaning. The last item is the water. Water is used for keeping the sponge wet. I'm going to, and I notice in my sponge how I've cut this little triangle in it. The triangle, the whole idea behind the sponge is not to cool the tip down, it's to wipe the oxides off. So you just wipe it slowly across the sponge and if you can see it's extremely shiny because it's taken off all the junk. <laughs> The first thing you do is you take your soldering iron and you lay it up against the component and the eyelet in this case that you want to solder together. You let it get warm for about two seconds and then you begin to feed the solder in. You want to feed the solder in right at the spot where the two meet together on the component and the eyelet or the terminal strip. You feed the solder into the point that it feel, you feel adequately fills the hole. Then you remove both of them at the same time without touching the component so it solidifies and will be solid in its spot. Now soldering around a terminal is a little different than soldering into a terminal, whereas a, into a terminal or to an eyelet or to a circuit board you bend the component and you stick it down in there and in, in the case of a circuit board you turn the circuit board over and feed the solder in, in the case of the eyelet you feed it into the top. A terminal board is a little different in the sense that you're going to bend the component around the terminal, let it sit there and then feed the solder in. Now how I do this is I make a little hook on the, my component and this is a lot of work but it sure does look good. When you get a terminal board all done, it looks great. Now there's my, there's my hook. Now it only needs to be halfway around. Don't, the hardest thing is to wrap it around the terminal because then when you want to go take it off, you've got to unwrap it. In military soldering, they only require that it only be around half the terminal. So I'm going to lay it in this terminal right here. As you can see, look at that, i got it right on. It's halfway around. I've pushed it all the way down. In this case, it's all the way down against the bottom. I'm going to take my soldering iron. Please note I wiped it on my sponge. It's nice and clean. 
I'm going to take my solder. <clears throat> and again, I'm going to take the iron. I'm going to lay it against the terminal and the component, heating both of them up. It's going to take a little bit more heat because this is a, a larger com uh, surface. And I want to feed my solder in. There it is feeding in. And as it feeds around, I pull it off. And that is a good connection for a terminal. That would be, that'd be mil spec. All right, now we're going to solder a tab. This is how you solder a tab. Here's my solder tab. I'm going to take my component, and I'm going to take my needle nose pliers and put a small little loop in it. You see the loop? All right, now I want to go up from there, and I'm going to go down here to my solder tab, and I'm going to just lay it in the solder tab. You don't want to wrap the wire around the solder tab because it makes it very difficult to get off. With any soldering, you want to make sure that you've got a good mechanical connection. That's very good mechanical connection. Beside, you know, you don't want to, again, you don't want to wrap it. I want to take it, my soldering iron and lay it up against the component and the tab. And I want to feed my solder in there nice and smooth. You see it filling up the tab. Then I'll remove both at the same time. And once it's solidified, which it is, it has now made a good connection. I'm going to inspect it to make sure it looks nice and clean and that I can't pull it off. And that's a good connection. Okay, now we're going to solder a PCB. Take my soldering iron, wipe in the tip, clean it off. Take my soldering the tip, bring it over here, I'm going to lay it up against the component and the run. Feed the solder in. You gotta do it kind of quick because there's not a lot of mass there. Pull it off both. And that is your connection. I'm gonna give a good little inspection of it, see what it looks like. That it doesn't move. That's a good connection. Well, one of the things you'll see once you've soldered something is that you'll leave a little bit of residue from behind, either from the solder or from using, utilizing the flux. Well, the residue can, in most cases, can be left behind, but there's times when you want to remove it, especially for printed circuit boards or for terminal boards, because it, it presents a, a nicer, cleaner appearance. So here's how I normally clean it. I take my alcohol. This is isopropyl alcohol. This is not rubbing alcohol. Rubbing alcohol has oils and water in it. This is pure 99.9% .9 alcohol. And I have this little container here that I can push down, and it will dispense the alcohol, just, just as much as I need, into my, my brush. I'm going to come over here and I'm going to soak the, soak the component, soak the area that I want to get cleaned. A little, little scrubbing action with my acid brush, which is just a horsehair brush uh, and a metal handle. Very cheap. And what that'll do is that will loosen the residue up, that flux residue, and scrub it off. And then I'm going to come back behind here and I'm going to remove the alcohol. And the, the little towel will pull the alcohol into it with the residue from the flux in it as well. The nice thing about the alcohol is that it's uh, very environmentally friendly because it's made from, made from plants. And uh, it evaporates and it's not too bad. It makes a pretty good connection. All right, after you've soldered the connection, you want to inspect it to make sure that it's a good connection. Uh, the few things to look for is you want to make sure that it's, an, it's nice and shiny all the way around, uh, that your component is held tightly inside of it. You don't want to necessarily move it to the point where you may break the component, but you want to, you know, a, little, a good little tug. You want to look around and make sure there's no solder uh, flowing onto another connection. You don't want to have any solder bridges, it's called. Uh, a bad connection will usually, you can identify it by not enough solder in the spot or in the, in the hole. Um, another indication of bad solder connection is it's kind of grainy looking, it's not shiny. Uh, and oftentimes you can, if you pull hard enough, you'll be able to break the component out of the, out of the connection. Those are things you don't want to happen. If you find yourself you have a bad solder connection, you want to re-solder it. Remove the old solder and apply new solder and start again. I hope this video has provided some helpful tips for improving your soldering skills. I look forward to seeing you again.